The latest Fortune 500 list includes a new name, Veritiv, a public company less than two years old, formed following the merger of an international paper unit and Unisource Worldwide. I'm joined by Veritiv CEO, Mary Lashinger. It's so nice to see you. Thank you, Rhonda, and thanks for having me back again. And congratulations Thank you. on the uh, Fortune 500 list. One reason for that is your, your net sales last year, about 8.7 billion. Yes. I want to ask you about the most recent recent quarter. Your net sales were down, earnings were up, net sales were down. A couple of reasons there, currency, that's affected a lot of companies. But you also mentioned a structural decline in the paper industry. Yes. How do you manage through that? Through that. Well, um, there's no question that a portion of our business, fortunately, it's a smaller portion of our earnings, is in structural decline due to technology changes. Um, and the way you have to manage that is you have to be better than your competition, and you've got to be constantly right-sizing the business for where demand is taking you. And you do have several components to your business. Paper is one of them. You're a yes. B2B company uh, that serves solutions, packaging, paper, things like this. You also had to take two giant companies, yes. integrate <laughs> them, they go public. Uh, how, what was the toughest part of the integration and really taking potentially two different cultures and right, having them mesh? Right. Um, well, first of all, we're about halfway through our integration. So we still have a significant amount of work to do in terms of systems and technology. That's right ahead of us over the course of the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, you know what? It's been remarkably easier than what I expected, to wow, be honest. that's Rhonda. great. <laughs> I know, because um, I reflected early on how challenging this was going to be. But I think that's a direct result of the team of people across Veritiv that really wanted this to work. And I couldn't be more proud of them. Um, and certainly there were cultural differences, but we're bringing that together by building a new culture based on our values um, for the company as we go forward. So what is your outlook for the business the rest of this year in a bigger macro sense in sure. terms of what you're seeing with the economy. So there's a lot of worries that we're slowing down and the Fed's going to raise rates. So where do you right. see the business in terms of that? Well, our business dynamics are driven by GDP growth uh, type factors and white collar employment are some of the biggest factors that drive demand in our business. And then the other things we can't control, like technology changes, we can't control. So if you focus on the first two, you know, we've seen a sporadic uh, performance over year to date. Some months are really strong, some months are really weak. And that has caused us to pull back in some of the areas, such as um, hiring as aggressively as we had originally thought. Um, but we're optimistic that the business and the outcome and demand dynamics are, are somewhat stable, but not robust. And, um, and so we'll see as the, as the year plays out, but we're cautiously optimistic, um, but taking measures to make sure that we deliver on our financial commitments because the market demands are uncertain. It's funny, I was just going to go there next. Um, your stocks performed well so far this year. How do you balance the short-term versus long-term value creation, especially in the kind of entity that you have now? Right. Uh, well, I'm of the belief, as well as the rest of the team, is that we've got to be focused on the long-term. And if we do that and make the right decisions along the way, we will deliver on our commitments. And that doesn't mean that you don't take some short-term actions to deal with your uh, environment, um, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to have negative long-term implications. Now, Mary, I can't help but notice you are a woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I typically don't talk to a lot of female CEOs, so yes. I'm always happy when I do, but why are there so few of you running around? Well, you know, this is a topic I get faced with uh, a lot of times because there are very few women on the Fortune 500 list. You know, I think being a woman in this kind of environment, it's, it's challenging um, for a number of reasons. I think first and foremost, women are faced with very difficult choices along their career. You know, they have to make choices around family and moving and other things um, that are very difficult. Um, and sometimes um, they, they make those choices for the right reasons and every individual has to make them for their reasons. Um, but as you make those choices, it either creates opportunities or diminishes your opportunities. And so that's something that you know, is, is evident um, and you can see it. And I also think though that there's opportunities for leaders to continue to create a better environment um, for, for women. And um, that's about making the environment more comfortable where people are not intimidated or feel like they, and feel like they can contribute to their full potential. And so there's a number of, I think, dynamics that, that impact that. 
um, some of which we can influence and control, and some that are personal choices. Mary Lastinger, it's been great talking with you. I really appreciate you coming in. Well, thank you, Rhonda. Have a great day. You too. I'm Rhonda Schaffer for The Street.